Hi, in this video I'm going to be um, extending on the properties of exponent stuff that we did in the last video and we're going to apply it to a little geometry problem, typical problem you might see um, or maybe on our end of course exam or something like that. So basically the idea is this, we've been asked to write an expression for the surface area of a sphere in terms of x. And surface area for a sphere is 4 pi r squared. That's the, uh, that's the formula that we're going to be using. And basically all it's saying is this, if we know that the surface area is 4 pi r squared, Okay, and we know that this is the radius, the radius is x over 3, we're going to replace r with x over 3. And so can we use the properties of exponents to rewrite this as x over 3 squared instead? Okay, and if we know our properties of exponents, what we know is that we can take this square and we can distribute it out to both the x and the 3. So in other words, it becomes 4 pi, and now it's times x squared over 3 squared, right? So we can take it and we can rewrite it that way. Now, 3 squared is just 9. And so typically what we would do is we combine this. Since that's just a number, we're going to go ahead and we're going to throw that over that divided by 9. We're going to put it with the 4 because it's just a straight number, right? So it would be 4. This is the 9 that comes from the 3 squared we're dividing by. We have pi x squared. So we would rewrite it as 4 ninths of pi x squared. And that's all they're asking us to do on this problem. Um, just move some stuff around and use the properties of exponents to kind of rewrite stuff to know that we have the x squared and the 3 squared. Um, hopefully that makes sense. We'll do a couple of problems like that dealing with volume and, and some other things like a different shape, maybe like a cone or something. Um, the formula will be given to you. Just can use properties of exponents to rewrite it in a different format and put the numbers together, the 4 and the 9, for instance. So that would be one type of problem. Um, second type of problem, this is more of a scientific notation problem, so it's a little bit different, but it goes in this unit fairly well. Um, I, sorry about that, I accidentally copy-pasted the, the sphere again on my notes, so forget that. That has nothing to do with this problem. Um, some scientists estimate that there are about 8,600 species of birds in the world. The mean or the average number of birds per species is approximately 12 million. So in other words, for each species, you have about, like, say, robins, maybe 12 million robins, 12 million bluebirds, 12 million eagles, whatever, okay? And the question is, how many birds are there in the world? And can we write our answer in scientific notation? So if each species has 12 million birds, and if there are 8,600 types of birds, we're just going to multiply those two numbers together. And so that's a fairly straightforward problem. The question is then, can you take that and can you write your answer in scientific notation? So um, I made a mistake of not getting my calculator out. Here we go, found my calculator. So all I'm going to do then is I'm going to take 12 million. I'm gonna multiply it times 8,600 and I get an answer that looks like this. Now my mode is actually set up to normal. So what's nice is it automatically displayed the value in scientific notation. That would be 1.032. Remember, E means times 10 to the 11th power. There are 1.032 times 10 to the 11th power, and we need an answer that has a label on it. So the question is how many birds are there in the world? So we're going to say that's how many birds there are. Now, if my calculator, for whatever reason, does not display the answer in scientific notation. Remember, you can always go to mode and you can come over here and say, display my answer in scientific notation. And it would have done the same thing. You could have done this and it would have given you the same answer. So that would be in a case where maybe it wasn't so big that it automatically displayed there. But that's a pretty typical problem that might involve scientific notation. And that might be what the answer is displayed. And we just need to know how to use that mode button to give our answer in scientific notation instead. So hopefully that makes sense. Hey guys, those are the word problems. This geometry problem probably is a little bit tougher, okay? But we got a chance to practice that in class. That's probably gonna one that, listen, on a test, that's what I'm gonna give you because that's, a, well, number one, I used to teach geometry, so I like that kind of a problem. And number two, that's what I think is going to be more commonly shown on the end of course exam. So there we go. Hopefully that's good for, for the first lesson for 6.1 and uh, working with properties of exponents.